Okay, so for those of you who are not aware, maybe you've just for some reason have never heard of WordPress at this point and you're completely new to WordPress, I just thought I'd clarify that there are two versions of WordPress. You have the WordPress.com version, which is a free version. You can go ahead and actually create um, you know, more or less a free blog using the actual WordPress.com domain. And then there's also WordPress.org, which technically is also free, but you will need a platform and web hosting in order to use this. So as you can see, WordPress is web-based software you can use to create beautiful websites, blogs, or applications. Uh, WordPress is both free and priceless at the same time. So pretty much like I just said, you've got thousands of options for plugins, which are mostly like add-ons you can use to enhance your website. And then you also have themes, which, which can basically be the structure of the website, the design, and the overall layout. Pretty much what we're gonna be doing in this course is I'm gonna walk you through where I find my web hosting, um, how to install WordPress, and then we're gonna go through the very basics of uh, going in, creating your first blog post, all these other things that you're really gonna need. Um, if you head over to wordpress.org here, you can even check out, they do have examples of some of the themes that are free. I'm also gonna show you where you can get premium themes. They have a plugin directory here, which is native in the um, back end of WordPress. There's all kinds of add-ons that can enhance your website, um, add security, you can do things with social media, there's really just unlimited options here. And most of the themes nowadays, the great thing about WordPress is that everything is highly mobile optimized. Uh, the designs have gotten a lot better over the last four or five years. And any website you build nowadays with WordPress and using a high quality theme, you're gonna get a really high quality product and you're really just gonna wow a lot of the people that come to your website. So in the next few videos, I'm gonna start walking you through WordPress and you know picking up your domain name and everything that you'll need to get started. Okay, so the very first thing that we're going to need to do in order to get started with WordPress is you're going to need web hosting. And web hosting is basically going to be what you're going to where you're going to have all your files and where everything's going to be hosted out there on the internet for people to actually be able to visit your website and, you know, load the actual pages and everything. Um, it's pretty much just going to host everything. So one of the most popular hosting uh, sites that's out there, I believe a lot of people recommend it, is Bluehost. So right now they do have a hosting sale going on. Um, normally what you're gonna end up finding is you're gonna pay uh, an annual fee for the entire year. And a lot of cases, a lot of these companies will give you like special incentives. I'm gonna show you some of the ways you can do that here in uh, the next video on domains. But um, beyond the actual hosting itself, you will also need a domain, which is you know the actual www.whatever.com. And Bluehost offers a free domain and you also get the one-click WordPress install. So basically you could get set up, um, if you join their hosting platform, then you're basically gonna get the domain free, which normally would be an additional charge. And then you've got a simple WordPress install along with their support. So this would be a great um, platform. A lot of people uh, use Bluehost all over the world. So another option, and this is where I use my domains. Let's see if I can just get a full screen here. I also use GoDaddy. Uh, I'm gonna talk about this next uh, a little bit more on the actual domain side, but you could also use GoDaddy for your web hosting. Um, I've never used them for web hosting, so I can't really speak uh, too much of like the consistency and reliability. I know with Bluehost, I have a new site that I just built on that, and right now it's performing pretty well. Um, I know that they're, you know, obviously being how big they are, you never really know what you're gonna get with some of these hosting companies. What you'll find is that if you set up hosting, you could end up on a system with multiple other people hosting their websites and that could kind of bog you down. Years ago, I'd used Bluehost and had some issues, but I actually just had a client of mine go ahead and sign up for Bluehost and I had a lot of good luck with that. Um, seems to be performing really well. The website's really fast. So kind of hit or miss, I guess. You know, you never know what you're gonna get really. Um, worst case, I would say, any of these companies, this day and age being that it's 2016, you really shouldn't have an issue getting a fast web host and something that's gonna be pretty inexpensive. You could probably get in for a whole year under $75. So the next thing that you're gonna need for your website is obviously your domain name, and that's really gonna be the name of what your website actually is. 
Uh, I recommend using GoDaddy. This is what I've been using for years. Um, of course, if you decide to go with something like Bluehost for your hosting, then you're going to have your domain name through Bluehost. Um, any other major hosting platforms may also include the opportunity to get the domain through them. Uh, another popular option is a website called Namecheap. Um, but for the most part, I've been using GoDaddy for many years and really have not had any issues with it. Their support's really good and you know they're really good about reminders they offer free coupons all the time you can get some really good discounts on domains and just overall it's been a good platform easy to use so this is what i recommend um i'll show you here pretty much what you'd want to do so let's just say um i just went and actually registered this domain this is the one that we're going to use as kind of a follow along and if you search for the name it's going to come back with some ideas of whether or not you could actually use uh, that name. So since I just went and registered it, it's going to tell me that it's taken and then it's going to make other suggestions. So here you can see like dot news dot info dot net. Um, they'll add in some other things like biz because it knows that I'm typing in business. Um, you got some other ones here like it gave me a premium one New England local dot com. Apparently I'd have to spend almost over four thousand dollars. Definitely not interested in that. And you could even use some of these special like dot consulting dot directory. Um, now that nowadays I'm, I'm even seeing the dot co become quite popular. So you could pretty much do whatever you'd like. There's a lot of combinations. Uh, generally, if you go for a dot com, you can get it for about $12. But what I'm going to show you is <clears throat> you can actually go onto Google. And if you type in GoDaddy 99 cent coupons, you're going to get a lot of different coupon sites here. And usually it's pretty easy to find a special coupon here. You can see that there's a bunch of coupon codes that you could try for getting the 99 cent domain. And what you want to do is when you initially go to add this to your cart, there's going to be the capability to use a coupon code. And you'll just want to try a few of these until you can get the coupon to go live. Um, a lot of cases too, you may find that you may only be able to get it down to about, you know, a buck 50 or 299. But honestly, at that point, who really cares? could save 10 bucks off of your initial domain registration. Um, one thing to keep in mind about these coupons is you usually won't be able to reuse them. So once you, um, you know, start registering domains with GoDaddy, they don't really give you the opportunity to use the same coupon or the same type of offer uh, again. At least I think that's fairly recent. I've noticed I haven't been able to have a whole lot of luck there. So yeah, um, just go around Google, see what you can find in terms of getting your 99 cent domain. Okay, so depending on the host that you decided to go with, um, generally a lot of web hosting companies will offer what's called cPanel. And cPanel really allows you to go in and actually set up um, a lot of features with your domain and your web hosting. Um, you could set up email accounts, you could look at like error logs, um, you could set up uh, file systems, so you could go in and modify files on your website. Um, pretty much anything that you could possibly need on the back end, you could create databases, things like that. Um, but generally, just to keep this simple, we're going to be looking for some form of WordPress installation. Um, you could see literally an icon that just says WordPress. Uh, usually it's going to be probably under like a software category. Uh, in my case, my host uses what's called the um, Soft, uh, Soft Alucius, I don't even know how to pronounce it, apps installer. And under that, I have a bunch of different um, bunch of different systems I can install like Magento is e-commerce and PrestaShop is another e-commerce solution. PHP BB is a forum. Um, so I could install if I had registered a website and I had it with this hosting, maybe I wasn't doing WordPress. I might want to install a forum or Joomla or Magento, any of the other platforms. But in this case, we're doing WordPress. So what you're going to want to do is go to install. And in my case, um, I'll just use this domain as an example. If I were to be doing the headrestdvdplayer.org, this is an old domain I used to have, I'd probably set it up for the HTTP www. Um, the directory, I want to delete this because I want it to go in the root directory. I would give my site a name and then a default uh, username and password. I do not recommend using admin. Um, that's a very common username for people to just try to hack into. Put in your own email. Make sure the password is very strong. You, you get a little checker here. And then in this case, I would want English. And some, some of these installers will give you the option to like install a theme, but you really don't need to do that. Um, that's really all you're going to need to do. 
and you're going to want to hit install and generally everything else should really be set up once you've done this it's going to provide you with the credentials um, to go and log into the back end of your wordpress site so in the next video i'm going to start walking you through that process and show you the actual dashboard of wordpress okay so at this point you should have the <clears throat> the web url that you're going to need in order to log into the back end of your website uh, usually it's going to be your website name dot com slash WP hyphen admin that's the default login page and that's what I'm looking at here so I'm gonna actually log in with the credentials I just made log right into WordPress and this is basically what the dashboard looks like um, we have the main dashboard here welcome to WordPress they give you some ideas for some next steps that you can go through other actions that you can walk through so I highly encourage going through this um, you can customize your site and change various options so in this video I'm just gonna give you a brief rundown of all of these main categories and then some of them I'm gonna dive into a little bit deeper uh, in the following upcoming videos so right now I'm on dashboard this is what I've highlighted so here you can see you either have home or updates some of these categories have uh, sub options beneath them the first one is posts so this is kind of like your blog posts um, generally anything that you're going to be using with a blog is going to be under the posts section media is going to be anything like videos or for the better part it's going to be images um, any images or audio that you might upload you're going to all do this through the media area pages pages are really like more core pages that you're going to have on your website this could be like an about us page or a contact page things like that that are going to be really more like core element type pages you can manage comments as well if someone were to comment on your website this is where you're going to manage that appearance this is really going to be like your bread and butter for the look and feel of your website how things are really going to be laid out plugins this is where you're going to get uh, add-ons and things like that i'm going to cover more of this in depth as we go through the course users is where you manage the users that can access the website um, things like that and tools you got a couple different tools that are available to you um, probably won't need to be in here all that much and then you have your general settings and um, pretty much this kind of just has additional pieces that are the structure of the core of the site so in the next videos I'm gonna start walking you through some of these a little bit more in detail okay so in this video I'm gonna walk you through the appearance settings as this is really gonna be the the place you're probably gonna spend the most time when you really get started with your website um, so the first area is themes and you actually are gonna get a few free themes here out of the box you have 2016 2015 and 2014 um, you could try activating any of these right out of the start and just kind of get a look and feel for what the website looks like um, if I do visit right now you can see this is the default theme so there's really not much here I've just got the default hello world post uh, the name of my website and then I've got um, some categories and such over on the sidebar if I wanted to try out one of the other free themes I could simply hit activate and this one will become the live theme and I can hit visit site and now I've now activated a different free theme um, these themes have actually gotten a little bit better I'm gonna cover a little bit more on the whole free themes thing a little bit uh, later here as we progress through the course but that's essentially what themes is next we have customize and this is really going to be very specific to the theme that you have installed so in this case I'm customizing this theme I've got things like the site identity um, the tagline I can change the header image here that might show up it gives you recommended sizes background image so again all of this is going to be different depending on the theme you have uh, most premium themes are going to have a very high-end customization area that's probably going to be very custom and you know set up in such a way that it's going to make it easier for you to m modify and make changes the next thing we have is widgets now widgets are basically uh, the easiest way to explain it is they're pretty much just small pieces of of, um, of code or or text or other elements that you can add in um, as really kind of like part of a block I guess you could say so a lot of themes will have a widget area on the sidebar or something that could be in a footer um, really every theme is going to be different so you could have a lot more options than that but in this case uh, if we go over to the website 
I'll just show you. Um, right now you can see our widgets are search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and meta. So these are different like widgets that have been added in. Um, I'll add another one just to show you a tech, uh, test here. So we call this, this is a test widget. And if I save this guy and I go back to the site, we're gonna see that my test widget is now here. So I basically have options to remove these. I could put in different things. And right now I have like the basics, categories, comments, uh, things like that. So some examples of how you might use this would be, let's say you get an add on to display your Facebook um, page, like a like box or something like that. I just set this up for a website. I used a widget that showed a like box in the footer. So someone could like them on Facebook. So that would be an example of a good way to use a widget, maybe a search bar, anything else. There's, there's really um, limitless possibilities of what you could do with the widgets. The next piece you have is the menus. And menus are really going to be the top menu. Different themes are gonna support a different number of menus. Uh, usually you'll have to create a new one as I just did here. And then you're gonna have the ability to drag over um, current pages or posts that you've already created. So here's the default hello world post. I could add this to the menu and we could even do a custom link. So I'll just make this the home page, and we could call it home. I can add that and then maybe throw it over here. And this is very easy to use. Um, all you really have to do is sort of drag beneath. Uh, I'll use this as an example actually. This is a, it'll be a sub menu item here. And you can actually do sub menu of sub menu items. So if we wanted to add another one, I could even add it under the hello world and that would make it a, a sub 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 menu. Uh, let me see. Here's our menu. And there's my sub item and my other sub item. So this has an interesting menu. It puts it all the way on the left over here. A lot of the themes will have it way up in the top. Um, across the header area. So that's just something else to keep in mind as you build out your menus. The next piece you have is the header, which this is just going back into the customization and setting up the specific header area, so no different. Um, I believe same with background. It's just the background settings. And then in editor, uh, if you wanna get dangerous, you can actually see the actual code being used within the theme. If you go up to the top right, you see I have the three different themes and I could choose between any of them, hit select, and these are going to be all the different PHP um, code pieces where I could go in if I wanted to really customize something within the theme. Uh, I would highly recommend not going in here and just changing things. Uh, if you make one small edit, you could literally break the entire site. And if you do something wrong, if you break code somewhere, so what I would recommend doing is potentially finding someone that really knows what they're doing with this. Um, one resource you could check out would be a site called Upwork where you could actually hire a developer for probably very inexpensive money and have them do some customization if you're really struggling, if there's something that you can't edit on your own. So in the next video, I'm going to go through all the other basic settings and some of the more major areas of WordPress. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to walk you through the remainder of the most major settings, some of the other areas here. Um, you can see I did add a theme in the middle of my last recording, so we can sort of ignore the projects piece here that was added. This isn't normally going to be something you'll see. Uh, it's specific to my theme, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, depending on the themes, you will see um, this whole side menu just start to get kind of bloated up when you add plugins and other features, things like that. Um, just not going to be native to the WordPress install. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you tools. And there's not really gonna be a ton here out of the gate. You basically have um, a couple different tools you can use in here, like you can import and export data. Um, I don't even remember the last time I used this, to be honest with you. Drag bookmark below, press this. Um, basically, it looks like you can take some content from other uh, areas of other websites and um, put this into your WordPress site. So this might be useful for you. I typically do not use this. Um, the biggest features I would probably use would be the import feature. You could import content from uh, other WordPress sites or other blogs like Tumblr or LiveJournal. 
uh, things like that that are going to make it easier for you to import data if you're trying to move from one place to the other. And then, of course, you can also export data. Um, maybe if you had a bunch of pages and you wanted to move it to another blog or media, things like that, images, you could export that and put it into an export specialized file that um, you could use on another WordPress website. Uh, the next area that's going to be the major one is the settings area. So first we have the general settings, and this is probably the most common. Um, you can see here you've got your site title and then your tagline. Uh, usually you want to make sure you fill those out. You've got your URL in here the way that you would want it displayed in both the WordPress and site address. And then the email address, I usually just use one of my admin ones. Uh, membership, I don't recommend allowing anyone to register. Otherwise, you might have people trying to come in and like spammers just trying to register accounts on your website, which you'll get really annoyed with. Then you've got your time formats, what day of the week starts on, the language of the site, the time zone. Uh, most of this you really don't ever have to change. It's just going to be here um, and work right out of the box. The next area you have is writing. Um, there's just some default settings in here in terms of like mail server, things like that. Um, update for WordPress updates. Um, usually don't really need to change much of anything in here. So this is just something to keep in mind in case you ever need it. Then you have reading. Um, this may be something you would need to tweak if your homepage is displaying blog posts and you need more of like, um, let's say you have a storefront and you're running an e-commerce based website here with WordPress. Uh, you may want to set up a static page where you've got your store items instead of the default blog. So this is where you would do that. Um, you could do a static page and then you could select in this case maybe like a shop page, something like that, or home page. Um, you can set how many blogs uh, show up on the on the page um, on the, by default. So, you, you know, if I wanted to do less, you could do five. Um, this is another really important setting. Discourage search engines from indexing the site. Um, if you're not familiar with what that means, uh, indexing essentially is what is in Google's system in their in their actual index really of the websites that um, that can be found through Google search uh, same with Bing and Yahoo and any other search engine um, they have bots that consistently crawl the websites and will find the pages on your site and then put them into their index so if you check off this box then the bots that find your site will basically see a piece of code that says oh we don't want to put put the website into Google or Bing or whatever the case and if you do this, uh, obviously you're not going to be able to get found in the search engines. So this would be something that you would only use during like the initial stages of building your website. Uh, so in my case, since this website's brand new, I may want to discourage the search engines because I haven't finished creating all the content and making all the actual pages. So that would be where you'd use a setting like this. Next thing you have is discussion. And this is really just some default article stuff. I usually don't really... Uh, modify any of these things, but you can you can kind of tweak some things like make sure people are registered if they comment. Um, you have some comment moderation stuff. There's blacklists. You got some avatar options here. So if someone that like comments that doesn't have an account, um, this is what will display by default. So these are pretty much your options here. Uh, I usually don't change much in here, but you got a few options. Next, you have media. Um, you could change some of the default image sizes. I recommend just leaving these because it's pretty good thumbnails around 150, medium size files around 300. Um, essentially what this is gonna do is if I uploaded a file that was say like 3000 by 2000, it would give me the option to automatically scale that image into these sizes. So I could take my huge image and scale it down into a medium size and then put that into a blog post. And the next area is permalinks. Now, this is actually a really important area. Um, I typically use what's called a custom structure. And you have um, basically a layout of how your post and how everything's going to look in terms of, um, you know, all the pages on your website. So the plain one is this equals P, you know, equal one, two, three, it, or question mark P equals one, two, three. Just really not practical. Um, it's not good for search engines. You know, if you wrote a post that was about, um, you know, how to grow a garden or something like that, then you'd much rather have something similar to this, like sample post um, would be replaced with how to grow a garden and Google would actually pick up on that. So what I typically like to do is use a custom structure that includes the category and the actual post name. 
So I'm going to give you guys, um, I don't have it off the top of my head. I always forget what it is, but I'll make um, a file that you guys can get at the end of this course. It's going to be in the project area um, or depending if you're watching this on Udemy, then I'll probably give you guys like a, an extra file download where I'll show you the custom structure I use. Um, it's a pretty much just a simple uh, syntax here that you can put in and that's what I use for all of my websites. Um, in terms of other settings, I mean, th this is pretty much it. I'm going to show you in the next upcoming videos how to work with posts and how to create your own posts. Um, the only other area I guess I'll briefly mention is the users section. So in my case, this is my user uh, area. You basically have some options in here that if I wanted to put in my name, I could do that and I could change how I'm going to be displayed on the blog. So if I made a post right now, it's going to use my username AEHS01. But I may, I obviously might not want that. I might want it to say John Shea instead. Uh, I could also put in a website and a small bio. And then if I needed to make a new password, this is where you do it. As well as adding new users. Um, one last thing that I will mention in the user area is you can also set up specific accounts. So what you could do is select between subscriber, contributor, author, editor, and administrator. Obviously, I'm an administrator. But maybe I want someone to be a contributor and this would allow them to come into the back end of the website. They're not going to be able to change like the theme and modify things, but they could submit a post and I could go in and approve that post. So this will be a really useful feature if you're going to have people helping you with your website and you don't want to give them full access. Uh, I recommend going on the WordPress.org website and just reading about all the different role levels and you know what the limitations are of each. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to give you a very brief rundown of how to use widgets. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is go to appearance and then the widgets section here. And by default, you're gonna get all these widgets over here on the left. Um, depending on the theme you have installed or plugins that you have installed, uh, we'll talk about plugins a little bit later, you're gonna get different uh, widgets showing up here. So I've actually now installed a theme that's called the extra theme, and they have some of their own built-in widgets that are you know, included with the theme. Um, usually they give you a very brief description of what each um, widget does. So in this example here, they happen to have a Twitter uh, widget that will display my recent tweets. Tweets, I'm sorry. Um, so now if you look over here on the right, you're going to have different sections that you can place these widgets depending on the theme that you have. So with this particular theme, there is a main sidebar. You've got some footer options. Um, project sidebar. So depending on the view where you're actually looking on the site, you're going to get different areas to put in these widgets. So let's just take, um, I'm going to take and drag this. This is essentially how you'd want to position it. And it looks like I have to go into Twitter and do some like special login stuff. Um, let's see if we could do, I'll just take a categories one to show you an example of how it's ultimately going to look. And we can just title it categories because this is a default one. Now that we save that, I'm going to go, let's just visit the site. And you can see that I now have my categories. It's not really displaying all that well. I'd probably want to use a different widget here just due to the fact the theme doesn't seem to be too happy with it. But um, you can go in here and you could set a specific, you know, choose a category and it would then pull those posts in that category. So that's essentially what that widget did. Um, I'm kind of I've played around with the site a little bit more as we've gone through the recordings, but um, You know again, you could really do quite a bit with widgets uh, The biggest thing I find people often use is if you need to add an HTML You can use the text widget here and you could add in some specialized code maybe for like a graphic uh, on a sidebar and You know something that you may want to link but again, it's pretty open-ended of course with HTML You could pretty much do anything you'd like and you could use a lot of the other um, you know, default widgets or other plugins that will add widgets. Uh, for example, you might be able to get like a Facebook like box widget and you could put that in your footer or in a sidebar. So that's really the biggest advantage to using the widget area. Okay, so in the last video, I had briefly mentioned I was going to show you guys the permalink structure that I use for my videos, or I'm sorry, for my, um, my WordPress site. And here you can see I've got a custom structure. This is on one of my uh, sites, voicesofmarketing.com. And I use the slash category slash post name um, 
permalink structure. And what this essentially is going to do is give you a structure where you get the category and the actual post name in your URL. So I'm going to give you an example of a post I did here. This one is voicesofmarketing.com slash blog. So blog is my category. And then I've got best business or marketing event. Um, my post was called how to set up your absolute best business or marketing event. So I use this, you know, technically this is your category. And then the last piece is your post name. So very, very simple. This is good for SEO, which I'm going to kind of cover a little bit. I'll show you the Yoast SEO plugin in one of the upcoming videos and how that plays a role. But essentially, the biggest thing is that you could have a keyword in this URL. So uh, what I recommend is, you know, using this permalink structure. This is what I use for all of my websites. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to walk you through um, finding some free themes. Now, obviously, you have the stock themes here, the 2015, 2014, and 2016, but you can also find new free themes in the theme directory here. Um, there's quite a few of them, but I will say that a lot of the free themes are going to be pretty limiting, and uh, just overall, you're not going to get um, something that's going to really be quite as in-depth as a premium theme. So just keep this in mind. Um, you know, obviously if you're just starting out and you just want something really basic, then I would say go for a free one. Um, you can search around um, Google as well and find free themes that aren't necessarily in the plugin directory here. You know, they've got a few of them that actually aren't too bad. I think they've gotten a lot better over the years. Um, let's just try one out as kind of a quick demo here. I'm going to install this one called Sydney. Let's say you're a business. Um, I have, normally this won't happen to you, but my hosting has some it's a little finicky. So if we do activate, it's now live and we can visit the site and I'm gonna close out my password thing here. So this is a super simple uh, business based theme. So you got this big like uh, header image going on here. You got your home button. So this is where your menu would go. Click to begin. Um, here's our widget area over on the right and then our blog here in the center. So it's a pretty simple theme, doesn't look bad with the big graphic here. I, wonder, I guess this just goes down to the center bottom area here. Um, actually not bad for a free theme. So this would be something that if you're looking to just build a really simple website, then you know go for something like this. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you some options on where you can get your premium themes. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to just show you guys some uh, recommended areas that I would check out for premium themes. Uh, one of the first places that I originally actually purchased themes about five years ago was over at a place called Elegant Themes. And they actually have a pretty good deal. Um, what you can do is sign up um, for their membership and you basically get free support and access to 87 themes for the price of one. So this would be something really good if you're planning on potentially developing a lot of websites or maybe you just really want some options. Maybe you see one theme that you really like and you know you just decide to sign up. They, they don't really give you the option to actually buy um, one-off themes, so you have to join the membership. Um, I recently picked up one of the most popular themes that's actually showcased here in the website. It's called Divi Builder, so that's a really good one that I would recommend. That's actually what I'm going to be using uh, for the site that I'm showcasing to you guys in this course. Um, so pretty much you could just go through and view the themes. Uh, you'll really see right off the bat that there's just so much more to them than what you're going to get out of a free theme. Uh, some of them can be a little over the top. That's to be expected with premium themes. Um, generally, a lot of these are going to have tons of options and everything's going to be customizable. Um, you know, and Really, you just want to find something that's going to have the layout you want. Um, they even break this down by the type. So you know, they've got e-commerce themes, business, blog, uh, magazine, pretty much everything. Uh, if you wanted to join this one, it's actually not bad. The personal one is $69 per year. And I think sometimes you can find coupon codes. Um, I was like a returning member. I had, had a membership long ago. I let it lapse and then I came back. So one good thing about this is you could actually pay for it, um, unsubscribe, you know, for that after that first year. And then um, you could download as many themes as you want and only resubscribe if you need new themes that come out or maybe you need like support. Uh, the next place I want to show you is a place called Theme Forest. And Theme Forest is run through a company called the Envato Market. So um, Theme Forest is just one piece of the Envato Market. Um, they also own Code Canyon and Video Hive and some of these others. 
Um, but we're going to go over to Theme Forest, and they have over 23,000 website templates and themes from just as low as two dollars. Now, what you're going to want to do is obviously go to WordPress, and you can really just sort by categories. So maybe you're looking to build uh, a website in the real estate industry. You could go to real estate, and I usually like to sort by best sellers. And here you can see I've got one called Real Homes, and you could click on the um, on a demo here. And now I'm in a demo of the Real Homes website, and I basically have this great real estate website uh, demo. So if I wanted to build someone a real estate site where they could search for homes, um, this one looks like the way to go, and it's very popular as as we can see. Let's see if I can jump out of this. It's taking over my screen here. Um, so pretty much what I recommend is just searching as well for the things that you're looking for. Um, you could do filters over here on the left. And what you're going to find it on Theme Forest is most of the themes are going to be about $50 to $60. Um, you can see as I go down, I'm anywhere between $49 and $59. So it's pretty much like the going rate over here on Theme Forest. And it really is worth it. Um, I've used, uh, I'll give you some samples of some sites that I've actually done. This is the theme. Let me take out this real estate. Uh, I use this one called Build Press, which is very popular. It's gotten over 5,000 uh, sales. And I've actually built websites for many contractors using this theme. So here is the demo. You know, this is what you get if you install all the demo components. And at this point, I would just need to kind of swap and replace different pieces. So the logo up here at the top left, um, you know, the fonts. Uh, these YouTube uh, links like Twitter, all this stuff, I'd have to put in their own links, their own photos. I've got like a gallery here I could set up for them. Um, quite a bit going on here. You got like all these different um, logos and branding. Um, here are the different footer sections. These are technically all widgets. Uh, so I've really got quite a bit going on. And this also, also comes with its own drag and drop editor. So it's going to be, you know, it's very, very easy once you start getting the hang of it. Uh, so let me give you an example of a couple sites that I've actually done with this theme. So here's a painting site that I did for a painter. You can see it's a little bit more simplified and the colors are different. But um, I did this painting site for Metro West Painting using the Build Press theme. Um, so I was able to get the real professional look, but yet uh, very simple and straight to the point. Uh, I'll show you another one I did using the same theme. This is a contractor website, Triple R Renovations. This is kind of using his own logo colors, the black and, and this sort of uh, uh, neon green color, I guess you could say. Uh, was able to throw in the slider and just kind of make the color scheme go with the whole site. Some of his own custom photos, um, reviews, things like that. And really just set this whole thing up for him. So uh, it's a great theme. And you know these are the kinds of things if you were to actually start designing sites, uh, maybe you're going to sell them to clients. You could get the hang of one theme. Um, maybe you get the hang of using that Divi Builder theme, for example, which also has drag and drop capabilities. You could just start using that to build all your sites for your clients. So if you have any questions on premium themes, uh, there's obviously tons of options out there. It's pretty much unlimited potential. So just look around on Theme Forest, uh, Elegant Themes. There's a few others. I'll even mention um, one last one here is studio press is another very popular one they have a lot of premium themes if we do shop for themes they have some really really good ones here using different frameworks like the genesis framework which is really just a back-end kind of core piece of the site and you have lots of different uh, options to go with these are pretty popular with a lot of bloggers out there so you know just check out some of these as well and if you decide you're looking for something of high quality make sure to you know, put the money in for a premium theme. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you would actually make your first blog post. So you're going to want to go over to posts, and you've got a few options here. You can go to all the posts, which would be, you know, seeing any previous posts you've been working on, drafts, things like that. And then you've got add new, your categories and tags. Um, both categories and tags we can manage from within the uh, new post area. So let's go to add new. And here you really got a pretty standard layout um, out of the box with WordPress here. You're going to have the title of your post. So I'm just going to do this is my title. And then you've got your body. 
this is my body of my blog post. Um, from here, you got a couple options. One thing by default is you've got this toolbar toggle. You'll want to make sure you click on this and you're going to get a few more options. Um, pretty much here, it's really basic stuff. You can do bold italics, strike through. You got bulleted lists, numbered lists. Um, you can do what's called a block quote. I'll show you actually what that is. If we do this in a block quote, it'll basically put a quotation around this. I know this doesn't show here, but uh, there's back end code. Um, you can put in lines, you can do alignment, um, add a link. So if I wanted to add maybe a link, let's just say uh, home page, you could throw in a link. And we could just throw in the home page link. Um, there are also additional options. So you could see like previous posts here. Um, you could open in a new tab or you could just search if you have a lot of existing content You could search for that content and link to it. Um, otherwise link anywhere else outside of the website um, Beyond that read more you've got a couple different tags, that, you know Here you're gonna see your paragraph and heading settings. So if you wanted um, you know, We could do h1 h2 h3. These are probably the most common heading one Heading two and heading three. Um, generally, for most of the basic text, you're just going to paragraph. Um, you could change text color. You could paste from other other um, text pieces like Word or Notepad. Um, if you wanted to clear any formatting, you could use that. There's a special character insert, and then you have some indent options here as well as undo and redo. Uh, and there's a few keyboard shortcuts. Now, going through the rest of this, um, if we had changed our permalinks, it would display up here that new permalink structure, uh, which I had mentioned um, in one of the prior videos. You're also going to see you can over here at the very top right, you have the publish box and you can save this as a draft as you go. You could preview it. Um, you've got a couple, a couple options here for status. You could set this to like pending review, you know, maybe that it's done and someone needs to review it. Uh, the visibility, you could put a password on this page. You could uh, make it so that this post stays on the front home page and never leaves instead of bumping this post down. You can make the page private and it would go live, but only you could see it. Um, and then you could also schedule the post for a specific date and time. Uh, this is also in military time, so keep that in mind. So some really cool options for posting here. Uh, if you wanted to delete it, you would just do move to trash. And then format, uh, you have a couple things here. If you were doing like a video post of some kind, you might want to do video or a link, uh, any of these other format categories, this is how it's gonna format the post. Um, one important area is the category, so we'll, we could just make a new one called blogs, and we'll call it blog posts. And you could even make it uh, you know, a subsidiary category of another, um, so the parent category could be uncategorized, and this will help with organization. So if we do add new, and this box is ticked, that means it's gonna go in that category. Um, if you check both, it will actually go in both categories. Um, the next thing you can do is use tags. So these tags would be something like, you know, in this case, let's just call it blog post, um, first blog post, you know, really just things that are going to be, <clears throat> you know, kind of common and related to this post. And then you also have the option to do a featured image, which usually would be used, um, you know, if I were to hit select, I could go and attach files from here. You could basically attach an image and that's what's going to be the featured image for that post. Some themes will support showing a, a featured image of some kind based on that specific post. Um, and usually it shows, you know, before someone clicks on the blog post. So that's pretty much that. Let's uh, publish this guy. And now the post is live. You'll see post published and I can hit view posts. And I've still got my theme here. Um, so it's using that same business theme. So here's the title um, posted on this date and I didn't change my display. So it's using my admin username. Um, here's the block quote that, you know, it formatted it for this particular theme. So if this was longer, it'd be kind of like a standout area. And then here's my homepage link and my H1, H2, H3 tags. And then at the bottom, uh, you'll see the tags as well as um, normally right now, since I'm logged in, I'm going to see some things that the public wouldn't um, like this edit and uh, the logged in. So normally you wouldn't see that or if someone was just viewing this publicly. And if someone were to leave a comment, um, we'll just say this is a comment. 
I'll just throw this in on this particular video as well. Left that comment and it's it's now popped up as me. Um, there's my photo. And if we go back, we could actually manage uh, those comments. So here's, um, this is a comment. There's also a default one you could delete off the hello world post. But you can see where it came from me, the IP address. Um, I could I could click on reply and say, you know, thank you. And now it'll reply to that automatically. So it's pretty simple. Uh, I will, in the next video, walk you through some more features of uh, using the actual pages and things like that. Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about pages. Now, pages really are not much different from blog posts. They're just used in a different way throughout the website. So we're going to go over to pages, and then again, we're going to do add new. And really, you're going to have the exact same editor. Um, the biggest difference is, is that uh, this isn't going to show up prominently on the home page like a blog would, uh, depending on how you're utilizing your theme or your website. Um, you do have a couple other options here, like you could use a specific template for the width that would display for this page, uh, front page or full width, and you could also set an order. This may depend on the type of theme that you're using, but generally these pages, as I mentioned in an earlier video, they're going to be used for pages like maybe an About Us, or um, you know, I'll just jot down, you know, Contact Us. These would be the kinds of pages that um, you would make. And something that you would generally want to do is once you publish this, maybe this could be something that you use in a top level menu. So if I hit publish, we could go over to uh, appearance. And then if we go back to our menu area, which I know I covered earlier, uh, maybe an example of how this would be used in the menu. I'll delete our, our sub ones here from earlier. We might have home, about us, contact us, so on and so forth. So you can see here I could either use pages or posts, but pages aren't going to really be used as like the main area of where your blogs are going to go. So if I hit save, um, I've now really put this in a core place that people could find it while browsing the website. So if I do visit, I've now got it up here in the top right in the menu about us, and someone could just simply go here, whereas the new blog posts are all going to show up here like hello world, this is my title, those are my two blog posts right now. So this is the main difference between your pages and your posts. Okay, so in this video, I want to show you how to embed media and specifically video into your posts. Um, the first time I attempted to learn how to do this and I was even searching the internet everywhere, I don't know why, but I, it was like the hardest thing for me and it was the most easiest, simple thing to do that I, I couldn't believe that it took me as long as it did to actually figure out how to embed a YouTube video into a WordPress post. So I'm gonna show you, if you do edit post, um, basically I've got the whole area here in the body, but there's a little tab way up here on the very right called text, and this is actually the formatted text. This is the HTML text that's being used. You can see all of the H1, H2, H3 tags, um, my block quote tag, here's the href link. So everything is legitimate HTML code. Now, I believe when I originally was using WordPress many years ago, you couldn't just paste a video right in. I think you can do that now. Um, I'm over here on YouTube, and let's just take uh, we'll just take Taylor Swift here. And I think nowadays, I haven't done this in a little while, but you may be able to just post, and it's just going to take that code and throw it right in. But you could also do, um, if you wanted to customize this a little bit, as you can see, I just threw this in, and now the video is kind of huge. I could delete that and if I come back to the video I'm gonna to want to hit share and then I'm gonna to want to hit embed and if I do show more I'm gonna get a few different options here so um, you could choose whether or not to show the controls on the player um, you could show the video title enable privacy um, whether or not you show suggested videos when this is done and then the biggest thing is the size um, you could customize it or make it smaller so let's just do something like 640 by 360 it's automatically going to incorporate that into my code. And if I copy that, I do a control C to copy. I can go back here to my post. I can hit text and then I can throw this in. We could uh, control V paste. And there's my iframe code. That's the embed code. If I go back to visual, I'm now going to get my smaller, um, 
my smaller section here. The other thing is maybe I want to center this video. I could hit align center. And sometimes this gives me some trouble. I found it at some points. If I go back to text, you may have to manually put in the center code, which is very easy. It's just center. And then you have your end slash center. So if I go back to visual, you'll now see it centered and I can hit update. And if we go viewer post, um, I guess given the, the size of this and probably because of the blog, uh, it depends on the site. It looks like it's still fairly large, but that's fine. Um, depending on, you know, if we were using a full width style post, I think it may be a little bit different. Let's try um, to do, do, do format. So depending, yeah, I mean, I don't think this blog supports like a full width page, but um, generally some sites are all going to be different in how these display. So this would be just how you do it if you're having issues. Okay, so in this video I want to talk about plugins. And plugins are essentially just add-ons and other um, modules, I guess you could say, that you can add on to your WordPress site. Um, you'll find that as you go around um, searching the internet, there are literally thousands of WordPress plugins. Um, I'm going to show you if we hit the plugins button in the back end dashboard here. Um, you'll see by default there's a couple of them will be installed. You have uh, Akismet, which is uh, basically a popular plugin used to protect your blog from spam. Um, you do have to register an API key to use this, and it has been known to work really well, but I believe um, there are some better tools out there that you might be able to use for spam protection. Um, by default, this will not be activated. And then you get um, kind of like the symbolized Hello Dolly plugin that just you know is included with every WordPress in installation. I usually just go ahead and you, know, you can select it and delete it. And you can, uh, you know, easily just delete files. Uh, mine asked me for authentication, but not a big deal. Um, you can see I have one here. Any activated plugin will show, you know, kind of this bluish um, tint on it. You can see this is already activated. I have the deactivate button. Um, if I wanted to add new plugins, I can hit add new. And basically, I'm going to get this directory of plugins um, based on featured. Um, you could sort by what's popular. You could sort by recommended and favorites. So favorites would be, you know, if you had an account with WordPress.org, you could set up your own favorites and um, you know have that as a record. But um, you know, let's let's go to popular, and I'll just kind of give you an idea of some of the plugins that you can get. Um, you know, we have WordPress Security. This is basically you know a plugin used for security purposes to protect your site from hackers, things like that. Um, Google Analytics plugins, you know, for looking at your traffic. WooCommerce is very popular, a free plugin used for turning your website into an e commerce store. Uh, Jetpack is another one here that um, it has all kinds of different stats. You know, they can protect your site. You can view other stats. You could uh, manage multiple sites with it. You could set up uh, social media auto posting. It has all kinds of features. It's pretty, um, pretty open ended. You've got really just lots and lots of different plugins. You can see a lot of these have over a million. Uh, Google XML sitemaps, that's used for Google. Um, WP Supercache, you could speed up your website. A page builder plugin, uh, disable your comments. You can add a Google Analytics dashboard. You could set up backups for your website. Uh, you could duplicate your website and clone it. You know, you really you just have so many possibilities of what you could do with plugins. So I figured I'd give you guys uh, somewhat of an idea of what you're looking at here and what some of these plugins do. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to briefly, very briefly, walk you through the Yoast SEO plugin. Now, if you're going to be blogging on your website, uh, granted, I, this is not a course about SEO. Um, I just figured this is going to be a very crucial thing that you should really take some time to actually start to learn about. Um, especially if you're going to be looking to get some traffic through the search engines and through your blog content. Um, now that I've installed Yoast SEO, I'm going to give you the most basic rundown of how the plugin works. Um, if we go to all of our posts, I'm going to take my example post. This is my title. And now, you know, here I've got Taylor Swift. And um, I've now, because I've installed Yoast, Yoast SEO, 
I have a kind of this snippet area that appears. The plugin adds this whole extra block. You can actually minimize it here. Um, my, I've also installed a plugin, and that's also added some stuff here where I can do some review stuff. So different plugins and themes will add extra um, sort of functionality to the WordPress backend here. And under Yoast, what we want to do is essentially we're going to get this kind of snippet editor so we can very quickly set up a post to target a specific keyword. So let's just say we're going to use Taylor Swift as our example keyword. And it's going to tell me that, um, you know, pretty much what it's finding. So let's say our H1 tag was Taylor Swift. We called our title Taylor Swift. And because I don't have the permalink structure set up, I can't make the URL Taylor Swift, but that's also going to be a ranking factor. Um, how many times it shows up in the blog post will be a ranking factor. And if I update this, you know, as I go, it's basically going to, you know, mention how many times I've used this keyword if it's in the article enough. Um, and really, we can set up a description here. So, you know, my title could be Taylor Swift, um, you know, new song, something like that. And then I could make my description, you know, check out the new Taylor Swift song. And now as I go, it's starting to give me you know, more and more tips and suggestions. So obviously it's telling me we need more text. There's not enough going on. We need images. Um, we haven't used the keyword in a subheading, which I believe if I hit, hit uh, update here, you yeah, I'll hit update. It should identify that with my H2 tag here. So now it's updated. So we still have no images. We still only have 22 words. Our meta description could be longer. We've only, um, you know, we haven't really utilized a whole lot more. So we could add more here, like, um, you know, if you love her new song, check out this article. And this is um, going to give me exactly how it's going to display in Google. Um, and then really, it gives you a whole bunch of other things. Um, we could see if we've added in some outbound links, um, which it is because I have the video in there and. You know, it's going to tell me whether or not it's easy to read, like based on a reading ease test that they do, um, whether or not the title contains our keyword, and then how many times it's appearing within subheadings H1, H2, H3. It also tells you if you've used this keyword before. So if you had actually gone through and made another article about Taylor Swift and made that the focus keyword, it would actually tell you that. So as you go on with your blog over time, this is something that you can utilize. So this is a very, very basic rundown of Yoast SEO. So I figured I'd show you this, why it's important, because really I'm making, I would be making this article in this case, you know, targeting Taylor Swift. Of course, I'm never going to rank for this, but um, you know, that's just a very brief example of how you would use the Yoast SEO plugin for WordPress. Okay, so for this next uh, video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Jetpack plugin and just kind of show you some of the features. This would be another really useful one. Again, there are many, many useful plugins. You know, I could literally make an entire course just talking about useful WordPress plugins. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I'll even do it. But um, yeah, there, there is um, really a, a, a lot of good that you can get out of the Jetpack plugin here. You can automate your social marketing using their sub um, piece here called Publicize. You can automatically set up Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, as well as uh, I think even LinkedIn to automatically post to your social networks as soon as you post a blog or page on your website. Um, you can use this kind of as a tool for keeping visitors engaged to get you know more shares and traffic and things like that. You could track where people are coming through, you know, views, visitors, likes, comments. Uh, they give you some of the extra security built in. They help optimize your images and they do have uh, support. So if I actually go in and I think I, I don't know if I actually have a Jetpack account that I've used with my own personal sites. I have one through a company that I do some work with, but let me see here. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother connecting this site, but you know, more or less, I figured I'd just give you guys a general idea is this is another really good one that you should definitely keep in mind in your arsenal for uh, useful plugins. Okay, so now you're at a point in the course where really you should have very basic knowledge to go out there and actually get set up with your website, um, really use the full backend of WordPress, understand how to uh, post things, add new plugins, 
um, you know, change your theme, uh, where to go to find these new themes, uh, pretty much everything. I've covered the, the most basics of WordPress. Now, at this point, you could be, you know, trying to install a new theme and really struggling with the overall design and layout. Um, even despite some of these latest themes, you know, they'll show you this amazing demo and you could import the demo. And what you'll end up finding is that it still takes a lot of work to get these things exactly the way you want them. Um, you know, getting pictures uploaded and changing things, uh, text, um, images, anything really that could involve design. So what I'm going to suggest is you head over to a website called Upwork and you can actually hire other freelancers. Uh, I actually freelance on here as well. And you can basically find people to do work uh, very inexpensively. I actually just hired someone. I only paid them a hundred dollars and they were able to do a website for one of my clients that I charged them over a thousand dollars for. Now, granted, there's still some work that I need to do on the website even after the freelancer was done. He did the bulk of it. He installed the website for me. He installed WordPress. He took all these kind of mediocre tasks off my plate that, you know, I know how to do them, but I really didn't want to spend my time doing the kind of minuscule stuff when I could be, you know, spending more time trying to get more work or, you know, just maybe talking to the client in general. So what I want to show you, I'm going to log in as myself and I'm going to kind of give you an idea of what you could expect as someone who's going to be a hiring freelancer. In fact, I'll show you from both angles. So I'm currently logged in as a freelancer and you know I got a lot of activity going on, but I'll give you a very brief rundown. Um, as a freelancer, I'm going to see all these different categories depending on what I've signed up for. And you know, right here I can see someone's looking to fix a WordPress site. So this is a perfect example. Um, you know, this could be something that you could put out if you needed some help. You know, the guy says the site was working properly. All of a sudden it started acting up. We think the database was updated, WordPress updated, broke some code, pages are missing, yada, yada, yada. Need to have you fix my page, fix this, update the theme. So, you know, this person is basically saying they're willing to spend hundred dollars to get this fix. And you can already see that he's gotten um, between five and 10 proposals and he's already speaking with, you know, he's engaged with three of them. And he literally posted this only 38 minutes ago. So you're going to immediately get, if you post a job, you're going to immediately get um, a lot of feedback. In my case, because I'm in freelancer mode, I could submit a proposal and say, Hey, sure. I'll help you fix your WordPress site. Um, you know, you can also see activity, you know, as a freelancer, you can see the activity of the account. So you, you do want to make sure I'm going to switch over to my client view and I'll even give you kind of a live, I don't know why it's not changing on me. There we go. It's just going slow. Um, so I'll show you the job that I even recently just mentioned. Um, I basically put out a job and I just said, I need you to build a simple WordPress WooCommerce site. And here's the description. Let me see if I can get into it. View contract. So I, only, I did this pretty recently. Uh, original job, but this is what I was looking for. My, my, my bad. So I just wrote, hi, I'm looking for someone to help me build a simple WooCommerce site. Here would be what I need. I need you to set up and install WordPress using Bluehost, which is the hosting provider I showed you earlier. Install a theme and the demo. I'll provide the files, install some plugins such as Yoast. Once the theme is installed, I may need some minor design changes to images, menus, and other updates in terms of design. I'll provide feedback as we go. And I said, the site is going to be used to sell a specific type of product that's for teachers. Uh, if this works out, I'll potentially hire you for more web design work. And then I give them this as well. I said, if you read the job description, start your application with WooCommerce. So if I see people applying that don't read that, that means they're not paying attention to detail and they really didn't take the time to read my job description. So this really will cut out the people that you wouldn't want to hire. And I said, Hey, please send me some samples of sites you've done in the past. And I got quite a few inquiries and, um, ended up hiring this guy, uh, Stefan, and he did a really great job. Um, and then we both left each other feedback, you know, and he basically completed the work and I'm going to hire him now for another website I'm working on. So this worked out really, really well. Um, again, I want to suggest that if you're looking for help, you know, you could have someone literally build you an entire site and design the whole thing for, you know, merely a couple hundred dollars, depending on the work. And, you know, especially if you hire outside of the United States, you can find people who will do really amazing work for a very low cost. So this is a very um, kind of basic introduction to Upwork. 
I am going to be releasing another course, depending on when you're watching this, on how to use Upwork, and I'm really gonna dive into the entire platform and just show you everything that I know about it. So that's something to keep an eye out for if you're listening to this. Um, I potentially, in the future, will have another course on Upwork. Thank you. So one more tip I really wanted to give you guys is you may want to consider learning a little bit about how to use the FTP uh, file transfer protocol service. And this basically allows you to download a program on your computer and you could connect into your web hosting provider and quickly upload files. This really comes in handy when you're uploading uh, maybe images to your website or um, the biggest thing in my case is usually plugins or um, theme files that could be very large. <clears throat> the other reason that this is important is if you ever needed to change like file permissions, um, maybe you needed to upload like a huge bulk of files into a media directory, um, it's just a really good thing to have kind of in your arsenal as someone who's gonna be working on websites. So the, the tool that I recommend is called FileZilla. Um, I just wanted to bring it up here. I'm not connected into anything, but essentially what you'd be able to do is you'd have this two pane window where this is my desktop and on the right side I'm gonna have um, you know a connection into my my actual web host and I could browse the file structure of my web hosting um, you know my web hosted sites and I'd be able to upload any files and make any changes that I need to make and this is gonna make um, that a lot easier than going through something like the cPanel system and trying to do it through their own file browser you're gonna be very limited in what you can do so I just wanted to throw this out there as a recommendation. You, FileZilla is my favorite tool for using this. I know there's many programs out there for that offer the same solution, but I found FileZilla to be one of the easiest to use and um, just overall one of the best interfaces.